this is a really strong, really visual, really powerful, really memorable Twinnery Sword card. I want you to see this happen, okay? Sorry about that, here we go. So you can see I'm actually tearing the card into four pieces. I'm tearing the card up, and you can see that clearly, yeah? Open up your hand. Place your other hand on top of the pieces. Right now, if I told you that your card is going to restore inside your hand, would that be a good trick? Lift your hand up. That would have been cool though, wouldn't it? That would have been oh. neat. Right, you're like, but it actually, <laughs> right. Uh, the best part is you can actually see it happen. So originally I was going to put this in on the massive download thing we did at Illusionist about uh, three months ago, but uh, after showing Brad and the crew Aftershock um, and another one, they decided that Aftershock was probably better for that. I did not show Descent to them, and it was one trick uh, away from actually making it to the downloads. And I'm actually very happy, uh, we're all actually happy that it did not make it to the downloads because this is a really strong, really visual, really powerful, really memorable tournament sword card that happens right in front of their face. I can't stand piece by piece restorations. I hate them. I can't stand them. I think they're like coin tricks when you're saying, here, watch me pluck a coin from my sleeve and watch me do that. I, I, it's not magical. It's, it's something to watch, but it's not magical. There's no magic behind it. Um, you're not creating a moment for them. You're creating a moment for you. And so I like the restorations that happen instantly or in their hand or things like that. And so that's why I created this, okay? So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a dupe for this. So I've already set this up, and it's a real simple setup. You're gonna take one of your cards, and you're gonna draw an X with a line. And you're gonna draw your name, write your signature, initials or whatever, on top of that. You're then gonna take three pieces of double stick tape, permanent double stick tape, and put them, one at the upper right-hand corner, one at the bottom right-hand corner, and one at the bottom left-hand corner, okay? Now, immediately, it's gonna be pretty sticky, and this is why you want it permanent. You're gonna take this and kind of just place this onto your pants or onto your shirt, uh, your mom's dress, whatever, and just find some clothing, and you wanna get that, because this card has never seen those pieces, so you want it to really pick up some fiber there. And you're gonna see why in a second. It'll make it a lot easier to handle this card during performance. You're gonna take the other card, the other dupe, place that on top, place your gimmick on top of that, and you're ready to rock and roll. Um, if you wanna do other card tricks, you wanna do other things at this point, you can take this card out, put it in your pocket, you can place it into the cellophane itself, have, do your other magic. As an afterthought, later on, uh, someone says, oh, do something else for me, do something for my, you know, whatever. So, you know, I'll try one more thing. And then you can just slide that card right out from the back, okay? So that's a great way of, of kind of holding on to the gimmick so it doesn't interfere with other things, all right? You're gonna force this card, and I would just suggest a, a simple riffle force. They say stop, lift up, cut the pack to the bottom, your gimmick's on top now, here we go. Turn the two cards over very naturally. And this is really a nice situation here because of the double stick tape. You can very casually show that card. You can pirouette spin it, you can throw it at people, whatever you want to do. I wouldn't throw it at people, you wouldn't be able to do trick, but. But you can just handle it very nicely, okay? You don't need to handle it with any kind of trepidation or anything. You're then gonna take a pen and you're going to write um, or draw the exact same line you did before, pretty close to it, and have them sign their name on the card. So we'll put uh, 
people. Now, I like to have them sign it like a signature, so it's like cursive. That's kind of important uh, because that's what I've done with my uh, decoy here. Okay. Um, and sometimes they don't because they don't listen and they're bad spectators. And you say bad spectator, uh, but that's okay. Most of the time they do. So just do an ambitious card at this point or something like that. Now this is a really important point that I want to talk about. You'll notice in one of the performances uh, something really interesting happened. I talked about this briefly on the audience uh, management part of this DVD, but it's it's worth talking about again. I was doing something completely different. I was doing a filler routine to get into Descent and I don't know how it happened but the lady actually picked the decoy card. She picked the one with the double stick tape on it. It was already signed, it was everything. And I was like, here, take a look at the card. And she looked at it and she didn't say anything about it. I know when she showed it to the camera, the camera picked it up, you guys saw like, you guys are probably thinking like, what just happened? That's probably not supposed to happen. And it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to happen. And I started asking myself, well, why did that work? Why, why was I able to get away with that? And I think there's a couple reasons. I was very confident in what I was doing. And when you're confident as a magician, um, they're gonna go along with you. You're the leader, okay? And, and you don't wanna be the lemming. You don't wanna follow. You wanna be the leader when you're performing. So I was, I was a leader in that situation, but I also at that point, I didn't explain what was going to happen. I just said, take a card. So that card could have had like five signatures on it and she still wouldn't have probably given a crap about it because to her, she was, her, her job was to take a card, look at it, put it back in the deck. I never said there was double stick tape on it. I never said there was writing on it. And therefore, I think that's why it worked more than anything. Um, but it, I, when she picked the card and I looked for it in the deck, I realized, I, I really thought I was losing my mind. I thought I had I brought another deck or something. And uh, sure enough, uh, Peter had told me that she actually took the other card. But it worked, it worked really well. And we were still able to go through Descent. So if that stuff happens, um, don't call it out unless they call it out, okay? Unless they say something, unless they, hey, wait a second, then call it out, then obviously, you know, make a reason for it. But if they don't, once again, it's cliche, but don't run when no one's chasing you. Just don't do it, you'll, you'll get tired. You know, your shoes will get worn out. So, back to this. I just thought it was a good, uh, good uh, story though. So, we've had this card signed now looked at. I'm now going to lift up like so and it's going to release the tape at the same time. Okay. And at this point, if you think that you might be able to hear it or something, just kind of do a pinky pull down or something like that, like a pinky count and then lift up like that. Okay. So just get your finger underneath there. Now I do this in two steps. I hold the deck in my hand. I start to tear and then I pause and I bring this up into my mouth like this. As I do that, I'm now going to take the cards and I'm going to place them, I'll put this down, I'm going to place them inside the box face up, but, and this is important, I'm going to hold back this card. But before I do, this is the most important part. So all this is going to happen while the cards go in the box. I'm going to shuffle the cards for a second. So this is happening here. I say so you could have selected any card you wanted to, yeah? Okay. We'll actually get rid of the cards. And that's the reason. Justification is I want to get rid of the cards right now so you know I'm not doing anything funny because what's about to happen is really crazy. And you can say something like that. There's no reason you can't. And I've just loaded that card underneath, okay? It's a real simple thing. Cards are here. Hold a break. Close it up. You're great on pretty much all the angles here. And then just close the box up. Take the box and place it in your back pocket. When you place it in your back pocket, put all the, the entire box in your pocket, like so, except for this card. This card's gonna stick out like that, okay? That's where that card goes, and this is in the pocket. I then come back, remember, the Sharpie's still out, and this is important. The Sharpie's gonna be the last thing I need to put away before I do the restoration. But I'm gonna use this action to steal that card. Tear, okay? Here's our situation. 
I'm now going to place the two-sided double stick tape part over on the one single one. Push together, tear. Now this is a really nice uh, display here. I'm now going to tear and rotate at the same time as I do that. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm tearing while it's still connected. I'm going to turn these two pieces over for a split second and then I'm going to turn this piece over hiding the tape with the finger and then revolve that back around. So they are convinced that they've seen their signature. That's important. Now take this packet, okay? So we have these little packets now. Take this packet and place it on the back of this one and press together. So that's our situation. There's our little packet that we've created with the double stick tape, okay? You ask them to hold out their hand. They hold out their hand, place the pieces in their hand, have them put their hand on top. As soon as they do that, you then get them into a conversation and you say to them, would it be amazing if that card just restored in your hand? Completely, I'm not doing it, wouldn't that be amazing? They say yes. Now, all the time while you're saying this, while you're going through this thing, you're placing the Sharpie in your back pocket. As soon as you place it in your back pocket, you're gonna place this card, okay? Into this palm right here. That's it right there, okay? Just like that. Now you wanna time this. This is the most important part of this routine. Here's the timing. This goes inside. Would it be amazing, Sharpie goes away, wouldn't it be amazing if I could actually get that card to restore right before your very eyes? They say yes, amazing. Lift your hand up, it didn't work. Now I'm standing when I do this, by the way, so my hand is down like this. So you just wanna be real casual with it, okay? You don't have to worry about angles. All attention is right there. Remember, you've just made an incredible announcement that you're gonna to try to restore that card in their hand. No way, no way. So. All attention is here, so don't worry about it. When it didn't work, they now come down to a place of, ah, oh, okay, so now they're in a relaxed position in their mind and their body. You pick up the pieces, you turn the pieces around, and now two things are gonna happen. Your, remember, you've been standing, so your hand is gonna come up to meet the pieces, okay? And you're holding the card just like this. You wanna make sure that your windows are closed here, you're in a perfect position. Now, remember your angles here, okay? So if you remember when I perform it, I had most people from like 12 o'clock all the way over to like five o'clock over here. Obviously, this, these angles over here, these times are, are horrible. So if you can't do that, um, you know, for this trick, don't do the trick. Don't try to force it, okay? I then pause. I show the pieces. This is when the hand drops casually. If I'm sitting, I'll just put my hand on my knee. If I'm standing, I just drop here. You'll also notice in the performance, I put my hand on the spectator's back, the guy in the blue shirt. And uh, there, were two there were two reasons I did that. When I found the card, I forgot that I put it the wrong way, so it was facing this way. Well, if I were to do the restoration now, it doesn't look good at all, because it looks like the card is turned around. So I peeked it and I realized what had happened. And I, I saw his back and then I put my hand on his back. And as I did, I just revolved the card around in the hand as I was talking to him. Which is nice because it made him feel like there was nothing in my hand as, as well because I was patting him on the back. So that was a nice little thing. So then I come back down. This comes here. I meet. I point. And, you know, if you want to casually talk while you're doing this, whatever. A lot of people might be scared to keep this in the open, but I, I wouldn't. I mean, it's just... It's gonna happen so quick in a minute, it's not gonna matter. And here's the restoration. I thought long and hard about how this should look, and this is what I came up with. You're gonna show, you're gonna come up, okay? You're gonna come up like this, and this finger is going to move out of the way, and as soon as it moves out of the way, it's gonna clip in the front, the thumb is gonna push off the first finger and click like that, okay? So it's here, and then like that. But you wanna come up 
in that fashion. Okay, so the hand's gonna, it, it almost looks like you're just kind of waving your hand over it and it just restores. And it looks ridiculous. It looks like trick photography. You're gonna fool yourself in the mirror. And I also like to do this. I like to turn when it happens. So I like to come this way and turn. And it's just, it's ridiculous. You, you can't, you can't, you can't go backwards. There's nowhere to go. That's why I like this better than a piece by piece restoration because it just happens so visibly, uh, visibly, invisibly if you're in Finland. Um, so I'm here, I turn, I come around, they immediately, now what's really funny is the, uh, the girl in the park yesterday, um, she responded in a really interesting way. I've only had a couple people do this, but she responded, she didn't respond right away. Like it happened and I saw her face and her face was like this. Wait, what? And that's exactly what she said. She went, Wait, what? So to, her brain was not even comprehending what had just happened like right away. It took her a couple seconds until finally her brain caught up with what she saw. And then she was like, wait, wait, what? This is scary. I don't want to do this anymore. You know? So it's a really interesting thing. So most people are going to respond right away because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a boom right in their face type thing, okay? So the cleanup is very, very simple. It's so easy. You're here. I simply just hand them the card with a dirty hand. I really do. Um, I don't see any reason to try to palm or do anything crazy. Remember, you've just restored a signed card right in front of them. All they want to do is look at this damn card. They don't care about what you're, they don't care about anything else. So all you're going to do is this. You're going to turn your hand down like this and you're going to steal the pieces away and they're going to take the card and you just bring your hand back down. There is no reason to go into a fingertip clip at this point and all this other stuff. Do not move your fingers. Do not do anything funny. Remember, if the deck's in the back pocket, well, then that's fine. Here, take a look. Awesome. Reach in your back pocket now and grab the deck of cards. Grab your wallet. Grab your phone even, you know? I, I kind of like doing stuff like this where you you're in this position, right? You've just done amazing magic. It's just, oh, darn, what? Oh my, oh my God, you're Satan. Ah, whatever. And then you hand the card to them. You're like, actually, what time is it? And then you just grab your phone. You know, like you just look at your phone. 5.30, cool. Well, it's nice meeting you guys. I really appreciate it. So it gives you this sense of like, that you're needed somewhere else. You know, you're like a superhero. You've just done, well, yes ma'am, da, 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 magic. And okay, what time is it? Awesome, okay, there you go. So use that to get rid of the pieces. You know, use, use, use a situational thing that everybody does to look at their phone to get rid of the pieces, say your goodbyes, and leave. There's no reason to do any crazy sleight of hand right now to show your hand empty. There's, they, they know your hand's empty. This is the only thing that was in your hand. It's now restored. So logic says that that's the same thing. So always use situational, situ, uh, situational situations. Always use situational, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Situational uh, moments. To, to really do the dirty work right under their noses, because that's really bold.